Hello and welcome to this Big Brother 17 reunion. Now again, this is a small one. These Channel 5 ones have been really hard to get people to actually want to do it. Um, I think it's raw to a lot of people. It's soon as a lot of um, tension still. But we've got Charlie and we've got Huey. And trust me when I say they do not hold back. So this is a reunion you do not want to miss. I hope you enjoy. If you do, please like, comment and subscribe. And the Celebrity Big Brother reunions are coming soon. And trust me, the lineup is awesome. Hello, everyone. And welcome to this. Well, I can't really call it a reunion because everyone else from this series were just being divas and didn't want to come. But luckily, we've got two people on that are just genuine. They would have, they were happy to come on, by the way, with <laughs> anyone that wanted to because they're just yeah who cares cool so let's yeah. say hello to charlie who looks absolutely incredible how are you thought, do you know what the funniest thing is do you know he didn't even recognize me Hugh, when i come on he was thinking who is this girl he's like oh, you look, like <laughs> you look so much better you you, re you really do look a lot better you know than that done before it's because but... I've, ditched, I've ditched the rollers that's what it is you see hmm. I've ditched the old i granny always thought your straight hair looks better Wow, it looked even more like, beautiful than Huey. Why did I Huey. think that curly hair was like really cool? Oh, it's big hair, John Kerr, I guess. How are you, Huey? You look amazing. Oh, yeah, big hair, John Kerr. Thank you. I look, I hear me, I look, I feel good. I, I wish there was more people on. So go, oh, hiya, how have you been? I don't get why people are so annoyed. It's, like, I don't, I mean, I don't it's so, can I just say it's the most funniest thing ever? How immature is that? That so many people like wouldn't want to, why would you be so bothered? Like I'm really not arsed. If I seen any person from Big Brother, including like Ryan or anyone, I'd be straight, well, hi, are you all right? Like that, I seen yeah. Sam a few weeks ago in Blackpool and he drove past on his bike and went, oh, hi, he, like waved. So that's just stupid. I don't get what people no, are triggered I mean, I, about. I don't. And I, like I said, I would have liked to have um, asked a few people a few little questions about things. I like oh, to, yeah. I like to um, you know, instead of hearing these little uh, Chinese whispers, I'd like to actually put it to them. But, you know, oh well. What are they? Just you, silly. You messaged everyone for me as well. You actually reached out to people to invite them mm -hmm. on. And a lot of people, yeah. from both you and Huey, didn't actually reply to the messages. No, I know. It's, it yeah, is a shame. Didn't because, apply, yeah. I know. It's I know silly. it was a load of drama, but who cares? Like that's what it's all about. You know, they they but deliberately Charlie, put to be honest with you, that aren't going to on. I wouldn't have even. I don't even think I'd have even. Do you know what? I'm at a stage now. If somebody, I, I would just ignore it. I'm grown up. I was 21 years old and had a lot going on in my personal life, and I was just outspoken. Yeah. And anything I said about people was true anyway, as how false people was because they proved that when they left the house, I never contacted anyone again. And even now, they can't come on and have a <laughs> yeah, the best mates. Uh, they can't have a quick oh, little chat and be like nice to the fans, nice to somebody like yourself, Lewis, who's doing something and just helping somebody out, that you have to get agents and stuff involved. Who does people think that you are? <laughs> it's so <laughs> silly. I know, it it's is so, so silly. It's so silly. Like, well, actually, we all did that Oh, but look, group, enough about just... others anyways, because I'm, yeah, I'm not... It's about, it's about like us said, right now. Huey and yeah. Charlie show. I'm not asked about it them either way. It's just silly. I just think no, it's just, so stupid. No, there are certain ones. I love Jane. I love Georgina. I love Ryan. And I'd say hello to Tish, Alex, um, Evelyn. I mean, Andy to a certain extent. Not my favourite, but you know. He's not was so false. And actually, to be fair, I know Natalie had a had her little bits, but I mean, to me personally. She was cool, you know, so I wouldn't... I, wouldn't I want to mind. say thank you to Natalie because to this day, people still quote that video of our and I went sick because of her. That's even on TikTok. So <laughs> four years later, a new social media came along and, yes, and I'm behaving right, like bitch. somebody... From one flew over to Cookie's Nest because Natalie wound me up that much. So if she'd come on, I'd have just had a laugh. <laughs> oh, Huey, you were brilliant. I'd have had a four. Did she reply to you, Charlie? She did, yeah, she, yeah. Yes. Uh, she, she didn't want to come on because of you, Huey. <laughs> oh, honestly, did she say that? Yeah. And no, me, hold on, she actually said because of me, she didn't want to come on. Yeah. 
How stupid is that? <laughs> oh my God, what did I do? I was 21. I shouted a few times because you told shit loads of lies about me. That was all proven to be lies. I should get an apology from her. Not that I'm asked <laughs> anyway. Know, it, it, would have been, it would have been nice to see her on. Because she is funny. What she did I do? I'd have had banter. If funny. Ryan came on, I wouldn't have had a share. If Ryan had come on, even though I know it's fresh. But I, we didn't have to speak about the breakup. Spoke through the third person. It's uh, all sound. No one's dead. There's people dying of cancer in the world. Bridge, isn't it? I mean, you guys are yeah, fresh There's well. people it's dying of bridge, cancer like... in the world. There's more it's dark just... people have gone on than shit, like stupid shit. It's years ago. We laugh about it. I uh, laugh when people think uh, they're up to me. It's like, who needs their agents involved? Who has to say, I don't like this person? You barely know them because you were so false in the house. You don't, we don't even know you. So how can you say you dislike us? Yeah. No, yeah. And I barely got to know us actually in the house. Like, I know for a full fact my full personality was not shown in that series. Oh, God, no. It's, it is such a shame, but that's my fault because I let my personal feelings on the outside get involved and I didn't really but think about it. But only be proud of that because I sure you got a big heart. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, hindsight's a fine thing to say. Um, given my chance at the game, things would be completely different. But uh, at but the time, Charlie, I thought... I mean, yeah. for you, you went in there um, and obviously with Jason, you know, it was already kind of a big... It was real life, but there was a storyline as such. You were in all the papers. It was talked about on social media. So what was it like being in there? Because um, everyone else didn't have what you had in the sense of knowing someone else in the house. So do you? Yeah, feel well, there were some connections with other people, but not deep like me and Jason. Because obviously, I had just been with this bloke. Yeah. It took yeah. me a good year to warm to him because I just didn't like him. I thought he was a creepy old man. No offense, but that's that. That's me being honest. And it took me a long time to warm to him. And when I finally did, it turned out he was cheating on me. So obviously, I was really upset at the time, and I was acting a bit immature. I guess it was like one of them where I thought, "Oh my god, I put all this time and effort into someone who's just literally turned around and just bang gone." Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the next time I see him after just before going into hiding, spending the weekend with him, he's there in my face, pretending that he didn't know I was going in the house, pretending that I was doing an, an IB for season and telling me he was doing some acting job um, over in France. And then there he is slagging me off to people saying, oh, look, be careful of her. She, you know, she and he knew that she was going ever. in because she told him. Yeah, he, so he knew. He was one of the first people I told. So it and obviously I couldn't then say anything because we're under contract to not tell anyone. So I couldn't then turn around in front of everyone and be like, oh, yeah, you know, by the way, um, he knew I was going in. Because then I thought, oh, shit, they could drag me out at any given moment. So I had to kind mm. of go along with the lie, knowing that he was lying, knowing full well he knew I was going in, and knowing full well... Yeah, and that proved how fake in, he was. He told me it was a wannabe show and he wouldn't be seen dead doing anything like that because he's a real actor. I quote. No, he was an actor. It's about Charlie behind their back. You would never. Say he, he said it straight to their face. Yeah. And that's what that's what I can't stand about that series because there were so many things that were said and that oh, I yeah. had to want to come out. And I thought, oh my god, you were so nice to my face, mm. but you clearly hate yeah. me. You don't even know me. Horrible. Even know me. I had the most horrible rumors said about me in the house. Like I, yeah, and I, I don't see shit. It. Oh, Charlie, it was horrible. Like, but the real ones are stuck by each other because, like, just today, me and Charlie had a phone call chat. We're good friends. And me and Ryan was together for four years. Yeah, we, we was a fake day. relationship. I was talking to Jane just no, the other day. Yeah. Me and Georgina is back in contact yeah. recently. And even anybody else that was yeah, fake and never really made an effort, I still wish them well. I still send them a message every now and again if they have a baby or whatever. Not that they message me. But yeah, no, the thing is, I'd, I'd love to see Tish, Alex, all of that lot. All of them, yeah, I'd be like, oh my God, how are you keeping? Yeah, there's just but two people that I Even if I see Natalie, I'd be like, how are you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, same. Yeah. Same, like if I did bump into Jason, because I, I have been in close proximity to, to Jason a couple of times because I've got a best friend that lives underneath him. So um, I have nearly bumped into him and I would be civil with him because it's water under the bridge. I've got no feelings for the bloke. So I've got no animosity because I've got no feelings there do you know what I mean oh. like, you only don't like people that you've got like feelings for emotions for but when it's all gone I'm, yeah I, I yeah definitely say, that's, you know? definitely... yeah I'm upset with I'm upset with how he came across and made me sort of feel in there but it's water under the bridge I'm totally over it and actually I've only got myself to blame because 
I should have realised what was going on and, and been a bit more clued up and been a bit more savvy and um, put my big girl pants on and been like, actually, like, I think we're all in love. And I went in there thinking, well, I'll try and get him back on national TV and it just backfired massively. And we yeah, had but good Charlie, luck the you only, there you go. You've done that out Don't of love me. and you, you've only yeah. done that out of having a big heart. you never done that to cause harm to yourself or anyone else and you can be proud of that he lied the biggest actor act shows that it was an actor was the no, moment I'll, I'll, he I'll, I'll seen you on this real... act yeah and that's a shame because that's not the real jason i knew the real jason i saw him um a couple of weeks after the whole thing finished and i went ah hi jason there you are you know the real one the, yeah. the real one that's been hiding and acting like you don't give a shit and acting like you're all quiet and stuff but you know it is what it is I'll, fuck it i'm over it do you know what i mean it was years ago it's one of those things um hindsight's a fine thing but that's the way it is you know i'm not gonna lose any sleep over it now just done you know? and, it, and it was a, do you know what taking all the negatives away it was genuinely the most amazing experience it was a dream come true i learned so much yeah, from it i got a really good friend not many people can say that they've done that can they so yeah and I got a relationship. I know it only lasted for four years or whatever, but I've learned a lot from that relationship and about myself. Yeah. So I, I, I never together, regret it. Yeah. I mean, like, I and I love Ryan. Well, obviously a lot of people watching Sorry? this will want to know, because, I mean, in the house, you two did have this special relationship, which was so nice to watch, because you were so different in a way, and it just worked. Mm. So obviously going out of the house, you said you had a relationship, and it's only recently broke up was that anything to do with the lockdown situation or was it just a no up? no to be honest with you because we're on here just us and ryan isn't here i'd rather not discuss yeah. ryan's feelings but for me personally it just ended because things weren't going good life was short and you have to try and accept things for what you are and see whatever happens in your life going forward lockdown definitely did put pressure on us like it did everyone else and it did, I suppose it did affect our personal life a bit, but I'm not going to say lockdown split us up and I'm not pointing any fingers. Me and Ryan have been both wrong at times in the relationship. We've both hurt each other. We've both done good for each other and we've both learned a lot. And I still believe that the two of us love each other and, and miss one another, but things won't work and, and life is short. And it's the same how I don't hold grudges with other people is, like, I know somebody, in her, her mum had terminal cancer and she just wanted to survive for her kids. And I sit down there thinking, that sounds dramatic, is when you look at somebody in that situation, why are you so upset about certain things? Why can't you accept things for what they are? And that's yeah. truly what me and Ryan done. We was just very mature about it not working. So we had to walk separate ways, as sad as it is. But I do think how we met each other was fate and I, like a lot of things to do with me and Ryan's relationship shows that like um it's so bizarre how things have always happened for us um so I definitely think I was supposed to meet him and I learned a lot from the relationship and a lot from the breakup um and it's a huge part of my big brother experience and it's for all of them reasons as to why I'd never ever want a problem with him as i said like if you came on here it's so familiar to me that it would feel weird but at the same time there'd be no like on my end there'd be zero drama or argument there'd be no drama no, there's nothing to argue about is there i mean at the end no, of the day you guys, you guys still have love for each other even now yeah right? you do, you still and have love Charlie, for the hurt other. the hurt that would be enough to argue to be honest with you i'm mature enough to place that to one side purely for the fact that we had so many years together there's no need for it to end badly and also i don't want to make a show of myself up on i'm 26 years of age i don't i don't need to go on somebody's video and start arguing with my ex for pointless shit what's anybody got to gain from that because one way or another when when the phone call ends we're still not going to be together so what's what are we what's the, yeah. the result is you're not together so cut the bullshit and then that's it and that's the same way other people from the house who just wouldn't come on this who lick arse people in the house and couldn't come on and like for the fans of the show and the support they've got over the years a lot of them gained a lot of followers from that show and like it's like yeah. let your bygones be bygones and stop acting so stupid like you, you would say somebody like myself mm -hmm. was immature for arguing about things in the house but four years later you're acting like you got a grudge what 
what did Charlie do wrong to anyone in that house? What did I do to anyone in that house other than support him and message them after the show? Me and Charlie went to their events. Nobody, like I asked some yeah. people from the house to post something on their Instagram for me once to promote it. They read my messages and didn't reply. And I seen one of them, one of them was Alex on an airplane just after that. And I asked him how he was, asked him about his daughter, asked him about his family. It was so lovely and so nice. I turned around to take my suitcase down because a plane had landed in Manchester from Dublin. And when I turned back around, he turned and walked off the plane and didn't even say goodbye. But yet though, in the house, he acted like, yeah. he acted like he was like the dad of the house, a friend of the house. And if he was in on this now, I wouldn't even bring that up. And I would just say, hiya, how have you been? In fact, when I messaged him for you, I even said now, um, hope your new baby and stuff is okay because that's my nature as a person. I might argue or sometimes be very passionate, but I'm actually a lovely person. And it's people like that are just so false, but they're all over reality. Yeah, no, because I, um, I, I did really feel for Alex, you know, with his with the mum situation. We went to yeah. that event, you went know, his in, mom, the, we in her memory. Yeah, and um, you know, but I do. I think with Alex, I think he's just, um, he keeps his personal life personal. Because, yeah, you know, but I do, some people are like that. I do think as well, I do think as well, a lot of people from our series was very superficial because they got contacted through agents, as a lot of TV does nowadays. They had television backgrounds. They were very focused yeah. on how they looked and their social media. And you know what? They were right, because I look back now and I wish that I had more professional help and I would have got more probably from social media from it. But that was my reason for going yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, just I, like I, I just literally started off Instagram just before. Yeah, you, before you I were just normal. I, mean, I, I didn't have a clue what it was. I, th I think I had about two followers that going in. I was like, oh, Everyone right. I who went into the show pictures. was clued up. Yeah, I don't Apart know, from me and Charlie. Yeah, me and Charlie, like maybe I think blind. Evelyn, that was it. Everyone yeah. and the rest of them knew all, all about agents, all about social media. I didn't even have the password of my social media when in there. My cousin had a pretty made it and controlled it once I was in there. But it's like, yeah, that's no, how it is. A lot of people who's in there are very well. superficial. Like, put it this way, Charlie. Some of their lives wouldn't be so private. They'd be more than happy to come on a Zoom call with people who were very current from reality TV and befriend them. If they've got a one point something million followers, like they are all over Instagram, um, with these new people off Love Island and hoping to get a little shoot with them and then oh my god happy birthday to this amazing strong woman and all of this bollocks so it's <laughs> such a false world and I could see that in people I could see when yeah. they were standing up in the house and they were trying to take control and take lead I'm like I've watched the show for years I know mm. what you're doing stop trying yeah. to pull the wool over my eyes turning people against me and acting like I'm all but how was others so stupid or maybe they were all playing each other at the same game I don't know because did they used to stand up like the, the most grateful person in the house is Jackson is Alex is this person is that person they're always doing the washing up but the truth of the matter is when you go to wash up Jackson would dive onto the kitchen and you'd never get a chance to do it so he was doing it so he'd look that way and it used to annoy yeah. me so much and I used to I used to scream because of it because I could see they were being fake yeah yeah like Jason Mahal is cooking the guy hates cooking I used to cook for him all the time and then you know yeah, I, I'd charge you would Jason have sat on the floor for somebody <laughs> right. Jason would Char Charlie would Jason sleep on the floor for people in the real world hell fucking no would he Definitely not in a million years. And that was what pissed me off as well, because I was thinking, what the hell are you doing? Acts like this gentle giant. Bloody hell. He's the moodiest person you've ever met in your life. Yeah. He's the fool asleep standing I up I could in the see it in his face, though. you know, that he was proper aggressive, because I said it to him one day, near the end of it, during an argument, I never showed it on television. I said, I could see the aggression in your face. What would you do if there wasn't any cameras? And then he acted like I was antagonising him. We went to the dive room and had a little huff and puff. Which did, no, wasn't which did. then did show on TV, but didn't show the part that I'd said to him. Which is probably yeah, well, why last that's, week. Yeah, but he, that's, he that's when the they show. Cover, isn't it? They edit things. They don't show you, like when Jason used to hold my hand at night and be like, "Oh, everything you're doing to me, like it's not going unnoticed." I really appreciate it. You're the first person I'm going to see as soon as I leave the house. Whether it's you or me that goes first, I'm going to come out and see you. So obviously, I thought what I was doing. Was like really like he's recognised, and that's it. messing with your emotions because he knew that you loved him. And Charlie, yeah. can you please explain the situation about the shirt, the shirt where he gave one of the girls a shirt and he'd done it to to get to you, but the public wouldn't know that. Explain that situation. Yeah, no, um, 
obviously like when we started dating properly and I realised I liked him and stuff, he used to always say to me, Oh, I love a girl in a in a man's shirt, you know, at night. It's it's hot. And um and he used to like me wearing his shirt to whatever to go to bed in. Um and then obviously that time Evelyn walked past. Listen to Jess, oh, I can't cope. I don't have any clean pajamas. And then Jason went, Oh, I've got something, Evelyn, looked straight at me. Gave her this crisp new bloody white shirt with this fucking swing tag still in it. There you go, Evelyn. Then gave me this look. And I thought, Charlie, you know exactly tell what you're doing. You want and to see how that got put on TV? Buy. Hey? You want to see how that was put on telly? You looked like you needed mental help. It was like, is she really giving him shit because of that? But nobody knew. No, but I knew. That... I knew what that, the, what that signified. He found it hot and he was doing it to wire me up. I had nothing against Evelyn. Like Evelyn was going to go near Jason. They all said on the way out, you know, he's an old man, you know, he's no AP, no one's going to go near him. But in my head, I, he, it, he just wound me up and unfortunately he dangled the carrot and I took it every single time. I was an idiot, you know, looking back now, obviously. Yeah, but, you, but you don't see it at the time, do you? You, you, you go on your emotions at the, the time. You, don't you need to tell them else. what was going on. Oh, and it was so bad at that time. Charlie had so much going on that was kept from the public. And this yeah. is actually disgusting what the producer has done to her. In fact, it should be, she should have been sued for how badly those producers treated her because Charlie had to explain to me that she had something going on in the outside world. I watched the show mm. afterwards and I remember a particular episode where Charlie, I was in the bed, my bed like that, Charlie was over the other side and she was crying on the bed. And because there's no windows, you can't see outside, so therefore you can't tell what time of day it is. Yeah, now, yeah. this was shown at the start of the episode, which implied it was in the morning. Charlie was crying on the bed. And then just before that, you showed Charlie talking to Jason outside in the garden. And he was saying, um, uh, Charlie, we're not going to be together and stuff, right? Then you cut away to the bathroom to people and then you went to this bedroom scene, which actually was about 10 hours later, of Charlie sat in the bed crying to imply to the public that she was crying like a weirdo because he had said that. When really, Charlie had got terrible news in the diary room about a close friend of hers. I tell them, Charlie, what was going on. Yeah, no, so obviously at the time, obviously it wasn't, I didn't really want anyone to know what was going on, but one of my friends was terminally on the outside. And she didn't have long left when I got taken into Big Brothers, but I, I did actually think she'd be she'd still be with us when I came out of the house. And then sort of halfway through, I got taken out um, to one side and told that she'd gone into a hospice and that it wasn't looking good. Um, and then about a week mm. later, they told me that she'd passed away. And Jason had met her a few times and taken her out to dinner with me and everything. So he knew the situation. And obviously I was heartbroken and, and me crying on Letitia's bed was me crying because I'd just been told one of my best friends that I'd grown up with had just passed away. I wasn't there. All the other girls were with her and I wasn't there. I didn't get to say goodbye to her. And obviously I'm in an alien place with people that don't really know me. So who's the first person I'm going to look for for console? Yeah, Jason. And do you know what he did? I'll never forget it. I'll never forget this because I didn't know how Rick. to feel, what to be like. I was allowed to speak to my mum and... They all said to stay in the house. They said just stay in um, and we're all going to support you through it. Um, and you're doing really well on this, that and the other. But obviously I, I felt like I needed some sort of support from someone that knew her and that had been through that with me. So I remember going outside and lying on one of the lounges, looking up to the sky and just thinking, well, I cannot believe this has happened. And then Jason looked at me and went, oh, you are? Right? And I was like, yeah, I was like, Caroline's passed away. And I remember he lifted up his glasses and went, I would just let me know when he wanted to talk and put his glasses down. He didn't get up. He didn't say anything. He'd met that girl a handful of times and he tried to say how upset he was about it and everything. He didn't even give me a hug. It, nothing. And Charlie, he and, knew and as well that out, I wouldn't be getting shown on telly. I telling. Knew how it was edited. I, I would assume that something would have been said, um, but they didn't. They made out apparently that it was over this discussion I'd had with Jason in the garden and made yeah. out that I was trying and to he, And he done that on several one occasions. Friends, one of my best friends had just died and I'd just been wow. told that news. It's, it's so, so disgusting. It is mm. honestly, I know you sign up for reality TV, but that is like mm. shameful behaviour by producers. I mean, they, they had to, to carry me that. basically to the diary room because my legs, when I, I mean, I've, I've never had a friend just pass away like that. Never. I'd only had my nan pass when I was Charlie got so I've permission to, to go to the funeral. Yeah. Was that Charlie had permission to leave the house with, yeah. secu with security for the funeral, wasn't it, Charlie? Like, yeah, this yeah. was a serious matter where yeah, she was I allowed get, contact with the outside out. world. Yeah, I kept getting taken out and speaking to people about it and I had to 
pick out an outfit and things like that. And then I was going to get chaperoned to the funeral, but as it happens, I got kicked out anyway. Probably because people thought I was a crazy nutter that just wouldn't leave this guy alone, which, well, you know, to a certain extent, probably did look like that. But, but wow. the thing is, no one actually heard what was really going on, what was being said, yeah. what he was saying to me. They just literally showed you an argument um, and just me and sort of showing it. my side of the emotions and crying and whatever else I was doing, you know. Um, but it's they weren't disgusting. showing anything else. They weren't showing us getting on. They weren't showing Jason going, oh, you know, you're such a lovely person. And, you know, I can see what you're doing. And I'm very thankful and holding my hand at night, clicking his fingers and then trying to hold my hand across the room and things like that. None of that was being shown. And that, that, that did hurt. I mean, I know reality TV shows, they kind of do what you want. You're kind of guinea pigs and they kind of do what they want to do. But you wouldn't think they would use something like that. But what did that That's, do to you when, yeah. say, when you left the house and, you know, you know the truth, what happened, Huey knew what happened, and then you're mm -hmm. watching what they basically put together, you know, for what they think. I still haven't, I still haven't watched that episode. Um, I watched myself going in, I watched myself coming out, I haven't watched anything in between. But did you suffer um, in regards to, like, anxiety? Because you've gone in yeah. there. People, yeah, I had, a psychologist, I had a psychologist calling me, making sure I was getting in the shower and doing my washing and stuff, because they were worried because, you know, I was heartbroken. Like, someone who I thought cared about me didn't give a shit. He cared more about a reality TV show that he told me he wouldn't be seen dead in. And yeah. um, completely manipulated my feelings for his own. And then, you know, it works, didn't it? You're Paid off. Prick. But at least I can say that those feelings were real and I wasn't hiding behind a facade and I came and he was completely being fake. Uh, yeah, and karma is a bitch. Karma is a bitch. It comes back around on people. Yeah, well, I don't wish anything bad on the bloke because I'm not that kind of person. I'd never wish bad mm. luck on anyone ever in my life. But at the end of the day, he knows the truth. I know the truth and it is what it is, you know. I, I did really think that I liked him at the time. It definitely wasn't love. Yeah. It was lust. But at the time, I thought I, I really liked the bloke and I, and I wanted to get him back. And I thought, you know, I've treated you really badly because I did. I used to treat him like shit. I used to look at him and say, go and get Botox. Your eyes are saggy and disgusting. Go to the sunbed. You know, you, you're all white and pasty. Don't wear those disgusting bootleg trousers. Go out and get some decent trousers. You're disgusting. Don't stare at me. You know, when we'd be in bed, I'd be like, face the wall. Don't look at me. Don't hug me. I used to be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and so in the end no that's true it's a fact it's a fact don't face like, me dog that's the part that's got me face yeah, the wall don't look at me and if he used to stare at me we'd sit on his couch and he'd go to step and go what are you staring at i'd be like you're a freak mate like you're a creep stop staring at me he's like yeah, see, that's what the girl that i know like, the girl that i know is so lovely she's not actually horrible right and but I was but horrible she's to him. And I, can admit that. I can admit i was horrible to him but do you know what it was it's because i never really liked him and i felt like he forced me into that relationship he kind of tried to buy my affection and in the end i thought do you know what this guy is really trying it's let's mm. just give it a go and then i thought to myself yeah he's a nice guy He's trying his best. And then I thought that I loved him. Obviously, I didn't love him. But at the time, I thought those feelings were, were love. It wasn't. It was lust. And then he completely got his, uh, his own back on me, didn't they? So. You said then that you thought he was trying to kind of buy your affection, I'm assuming with gifts and, and luxury stuff. Oh, he bought me stuff all the time. Like, but did that, did that make him more attractive to you? Was that no, not really. But I just, I kind of felt sorry for him in the end because I thought, my God, this guy really just wants to just be with me and he's trying yeah. everything mm. in his power. Like, he was very generous. I can't say that about him. He, he would never let me pay for a damn thing. And he had hairdressers and I'd get my hair done every week, different extensions, different lengths, different colours, you name it, I had it. Um, I'll just mention about an outfit that I liked to get me at. I remember him for Christmas, he said, right, write a list of the things you did, like, that you want. I wrote about 30 things, he got me all of them, literally. Oh, wow. And I mean, yeah, he was very generous. I can't take that away from him. He was a very generous person. And he was just trying to be nice, and I was just being a cow. So he did get his Yeah, so it, it kind of turned around. But so no matter that, how that's much... my karma, but that was my karma, because I do expect to get karma back. If you're horrible to someone, it will come back on you. And it did come back on me. It bit me in the arse massively. There you go, it's done. Yeah, but I'm also, Charlie, it was too deep of a situation yeah, with your friend I mean, passing away. I mean, at least yeah. the for way him I did to use it, that. it was done behind closed doors. The way it was done with me, it was aired yeah, it was, out to that, that, people. It is different. There's no excuse for it. And then, I'm, and then I'm, getting people, I'm getting people like messaging me, um, like thinking that they know about me and, and putting their two bob bit in about my life and my relationship that they have no, like, they have no idea about. No, you know, and actually, I'm not, I'm not a horrible person. Yes, I was horrible.
horrible to him for a few months. I will admit that. I'll put my hand up to him. I was a complete bitch. But then I turned around and I, I thought, actually, I'm being horrible to this bloke. And I gave him the time of day. And then obviously he cheated on me. And then we split up. So that was that. Well, Huey, um, I've got to I mean, moving on to something different. One thing that I just, it makes me laugh thinking about it now is you losing it, going, you're a trouble riser. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that clip just getting shared around. When you watch that back now, because it's like probably the most entertaining, the most legendary part of that series. What, what do you feel like when you watch it back, when you just lost it? Um, I, I feel like I completely understand why I done it. I still feel like if I was back again, I'd do the same thing. I don't know at this age if I would react as much to as many people, but I, I don't feel embarrassed. About, I mean, we've all bloody lost at times, and nobody's. Well, there has been some people that has been comments, but I've never been asked about the bad comments anywhere. Like people like he behaves like a child, or he's this, or he's that, or he's the next. Or people taking and saying that do you reckon I've got high functioning autism and all of this like I can't control myself <laughs> so like I don't yeah. so I, 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 I don't have anything like that and also again they think you know what to talk about and I understand that because people are naive um, but when I was in the house I was in such a pressure cooker that I just exploded and I had so much going on in the outside world I'd only really spoken to my family about my sexuality not long before and I'd never been on telly before um, I didn't have a massive social life for about a year before going into the house because I was dealing with a lot within myself personally so it hit me like a ton of bricks when I was in there and I was trying to get along with everyone trying to have fun I get very easily bored and it just all came out in that argument but there was loads of times when I was getting prodded with a stick by people and by Natalie and stuff like she would hide cigarette lighters she would tell me I can't use one when she'd be doing one with one and none of this got showed on telly so I went sick but everybody finds it funny and it gets people to have it on TikTok. Nobody's yeah. arsed, like people find it funny. So like I that's the same with Charlie, when she done the whole like speech to Jason about being in love and stuff, that people does copies that on TikTok. There's no reason to, for us to regret it because I think it's funny. And it's a part <laughs> of like funny. a TV it's history. It's <laughs> <It's so laughs> Marcus Bentley. Thing I've ever done, and trust me, I've done some cringy things in my time. That Listen, is Listen, Marcus Bentley. <laughs> Marcus Bentley and the Red Speed Brother, Emma Willis and Ryland told me I was a favourite housemate. Marcus Bentley told me I was his favourite housemate of all time just because they used to argue. So there's not, why would I regret it? It's fine. It's fine. No, I think, it's, I think it's funny. It cringes me out a bit now. Like, if, like, I remember I went to um, a party in a restaurant about two or three months after I left Big Brother in Swords, an area in Dublin. And well, the DJ so man, the DJ man put YouTube on the projector screen and put me on and I was sat there having my food and there was music on and in between it you could just hear me screaming and it was really <laughs> embarrassing the room full of people and not everybody obviously watches the show half the room did half did and, and it was really embarrassing but people find it funny I yeah know. I found it hilarious the next thing I, I want to ask now. is what's life been like know. since leaving the house for you both so what have you done since because Huey you did like Strictly Come Dancing in Ireland didn't you in Ireland. Uh, do you know what? There's more I regret on that show than I do Big Brother because I didn't really enjoy the experience, which is I regret not appreciating it more. I wish I'd done like a same sex couple on it because I feel like that's very important on TV to start to do that now. Um, and what else? Do I regret anything else? Not, to be honest with you, I regret just not enjoying that experience in general, but I did have a lot going on in my personal life at a time of that. Me and Ryan were kind of few months together and we still weren't living together and everything so there's a lot of pressure on us so and constant trolling on the internet all the time telling us that we're a fake couple and everything and anything do you know what I mean and because we were current from the house and we put like a joke in status on Facebook which we would do with our friends the press would pick up and write a story about it then we'd be accused of doing a story with the, with the press for a headline when really we didn't know anything, know anything about it like we put up one day a joke of me rubbing Ryan's belly. I then went into the paper, Huey and Ryan's having a baby, is this true? A question mark. And then somebody said afterwards, they're lying about surrogacy, they should be ashamed of themselves. When did that happen? So yeah. there was always a lot of pressure on us over that. So I didn't get to enjoy the stuff I'd done afterwards. But it took me probably about two years to get into the 
normal mindset again because you, you're so adapted to go into such a weird world. And when you come out, it is really, it is strange when you walk down the street and strangers know who you are. Like, Charlie, tell them about the time me, you and Ryan drove from Milton Keynes to Blackpool, literally two weeks after I left Big Brother in August 2016. And we were driving on the motorway and there was a load of traffic and we got held up. And we, we were in Charlie's convertible and somebody shouted over, How's Jason? Oh, <laughs> right, no right across the motorway. Oh, so, no. like, stuff like that is weird. But at the same time, it's been the most amazing time. I've been invited to loads of parties. We've gone to loads of events, got access yeah. to TV, and met loads of people that um, I used to watch on telly. Um, I, I like on social media, I've gained followers, so I've been able to use them to my advantage. Um, loads of people like give me loads of support. I got to raise loads of awareness for travelers and LGBT travelers and stuff. So I can't complain, I'd never regret it. If somebody said, Here's a hundred grand, take that and we'll take away the Big Brother experience, I would say, I don't want your money. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Look, I, it's been, it's the best. I'm so proud of myself for doing it. Nobody from where I'm from. Has ever, yeah, does it took a lot like for that. you to do what you did. Like, yeah, you know, I done something that none of my family. That was really like, great. To them, that and, was and, impossible. And in, in the traveling community, that is, it's a big deal. It's a big fucking deal. It's a lot. So, and I'm you've really got to be proud, proud of myself. yourself to stand up and actually be like, yeah, you know, I am what I am. Take me as I am because I don't yeah. care. Mm. Did you, you, know, you, did, you did. And and Charlie, I, I gained Charlie. Charlie's my friend now. Charlie's coming to have Christmas with me, so yeah, I don't I'm, regret it. I'm, I'm having I'm having a traveller traveller Christmas, and I'm taking my nephew over in a few weeks as well. Yeah, yeah. It'll be yes. did, it's be his first you, little trip on a plane. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, with Huey, did uh, with the traveller community? Did you have like? complete support from everyone were there times where some of them were a bit negative or did everyone um, just... like when you say traveller community people always think all travellers know each other because of that terminology when that's not true but um, in general for people who I knew it yeah. was a lot of support and then some negative and that was the same for non-travellers um, and the same with the media the same with everything for everyone I got support and I didn't Um but what I feel like from Big Brother, it really, I didn't mean for this to happen because I didn't know this was going to happen. I didn't plan it. I mean, if I planned it, it probably wouldn't have happened. But I feel like it raised a lot of awareness and several family members came out afterwards. I have a cousin that actually came out as transgender. Wow. And people from other suppressed backgrounds, like Muslims and stuff, messaged me and said that they spoke to their dad about their sexuality after hearing about me on Big Brother and my dad talked to the press once I was in Big Brother. Because even Charlie, you know, she spoke to my dad and he said, like, he wasn't supportive of it at all right at the start. No, no, he said, it's time for me to stay in. Yeah. yeah. And, like, as I stayed in the house, more and more and more my family got to see I was myself. But I was like Huey with a bit of ice on top of the cake. Yeah. Like a better version. Yeah, so, but you've got to be who you are, Huey. And, you know, yeah. that's... Mm -hmm. Fair play to you, because I knew that. that and that's took the a same with you. Video. You've struggled so much after that show, and you were in there. It took a lot for you to be so open and honest about your feelings. And people don't get appreciated for stuff like that. Did they, this is how fickle and superficial the world has become. Young people don't have an opinion anymore. You don't. Yeah. No. They're cheap. Um, all and they follow numbers, up the people's opinions because they feel like their own opinions don't count, mm -hmm. and they all they care about is how other people perceive them. I couldn't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, they're all told what to me. Like, as long as I know that I'm doing right by myself and by my friends yeah. and family, then yeah, yeah. I don't really care about anything else. I'm not going to follow a trait just because other people want me to. I'm going to do what I want to yeah. do. That makes me happy. And, and that's where people go wrong. And that's what annoys me with this modern day stuff and with the whole social media stuff. Everyone jumps on the same bandwagon. And you know, all the yet, did, did, the same why does it take everything. until... Why does it take Boring. until some black man gets shot for these influencers to post up on social media? They're all only following the bandwagon because the managers are telling them they look good if you do. Do not know, have, have them. your own opinion about stuff. You know, you I've met so skill. many of these people. Like, like ask Charlie, we've met loads of people who have like a million followers and they're so rude, so obnoxious, so like superficial, so stuck up their own arses and fake and like as soon oh, as somebody but, but, comes off Love Island they're automatically friends and it's like uh, it's like there's this girl from Blackpool who went on Love Island and there's this other girl from Blackpool who's been on telly and it's like 
why are you suddenly now commenting on all of her photographs that she's been in love on? Why didn't you do it before? And, and she was a popular yeah, girl yeah. In clubs, going around clubs and Blackpool and stuff. So she will have known who she was. And it just makes you sit down and think, you're so fake and superficial and social climbers. A lot yeah, but of you. people know. But people know those sort of people, you know. Like, yeah, I just I'm just friends with people that are good to me that I get on well with. I yeah. don't care if they've got one follower or they've got two million followers. You know, like it's all I have the same. friends. I have got friends that do have a lot of following and that are you know quite out there and they're lovely people and they're not arrogant and they take it in their stride but then I know other people that have got half the followers and they think that their shit don't stink and yeah. it's like you know they feel like everyone owes them something it's like no you don't it's be like, like what did you achieve so by yeah it's like what did you achieve by be marrying life, somebody who's right? famous or something who are you to, show, to be up your own arse just because you have a tiny bit of status you're an imbecile do you even know what people I mean? that actually like warrant that kind of like fame you know like a-listers like hollywood actors and actresses like and musicians. Jenner. you know they can be really humble and stuff and i just think there's just no need for this arrogance in the world like there's no need for it whatsoever. Just be humble to people. You don't I need know. to have... And that's the people like we used to get in contact with, isn't it, Charlie? That's humble because I'm still in contact I with Jane. I can't stand such, fake and super Such a real people. woman. And people think yeah. that I'm I like love that. Jane. I'm so not like that. I'm the complete reverse. That is not me. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're Charlie, like, do you not feel like on our series of Big Brother, the ones that said very real, like me and Ryan said, together for ages you're still friends with me and ryan we still yeah. speak to them um, georgina we still speak to jane we got so much stick in the house georgina wasn't the most popular with everyone jane was and she yeah. got hell on earth in the house but, but i got but, loads of shit you did we're the people that were and ryan, real. We're the and people we were the most was, real we were the ones accused of being fake yeah. and horrible but in fact, but we're the we were the people. most real. Everybody else was just lick arsing each other oh, for airtime to not get nominated. They hung off mm -hmm. each other when they got out. They hung off each other's mates. Well, I say mm -hmm. mates, I mean like they're Fake, reality yeah. people Fake who they just met once or twice. Like that. <laughs> and it's funny because... Charlie had such a negative time in the house and as much as you saw here, you were funny and stuff, Huey, I really struggled in the house a lot as well. There's a lot of, mm. like, there's arguments that was put against me in the house that never got shown on TV. Like, yeah, but me we, and the we had it hard called. in that other house. Let's remember, we went into that other house. We didn't that get our nice We were hell. put in those stupid fucking jumpsuits. I was fuming. I've got a size eight foot, right? So in those biker boots, I honestly look like a clown walking <laughs> down the bloody road. Honestly, I'm an idiot. I was so annoyed because I did beautiful heels I had a really nice like launch outfit it was beautiful and then they're like there you go you're wearing that and I'm like what the fuck is that Work yeah I girl. couldn't believe it I couldn't and then they took my suitcase off me I've got nothing to curl my hair with you know I'm Greek yeah. so I do have like naturally curly hair and then they were making it out like oh you know all she cares about is her hair and this that and the other yeah well you want to look nice I don't want to look like I've just sort of stepped into a bloody you know whirlwind <laughs> and my hair's all over the place charlie this is how naive i was at that time i was uh, oh my god when i think back i, I was such a, a good judge of character but so naive and so trusting i was like this little kid if you're nice to them in a the shopping center they'd walk out through the door with you right like the producers had chatted to me chatted to me and then they came in with this boiler suit they're like Huey you're going to be maverick from Top Gun and I genuinely oh, thought all... me? I just really love that. and I thought and I even put my aviator sunglasses in my pocket and I how stupid <laughs> I thought we we're all going to be dressed up as like a film character. Why did I think we'd be doing that? And I came in there and looked like a fucking sword. And I I'll tell you Lou, it's some behind the scene gossip. When we were getting drove around to the other house in the cars, we were all were blindfolded. And I needed to go to the toilet that badly. They took me out of the car. Two producers <laughs> holding my hands. And I had to zip down my trousers blindfolded with earmuffs on my couldn't hand <laughs> I just pissed out on the street. And I don't know who was looking. I don't know who's seen. And they quickly put me back in the car. Put us all into this guard and took off our earmuffs and ran. Do you remember, Charlie, when they're about to go live for us in the other house? Do you, do you remember the running and saying, we have to go, we have to go, we have to go? That whatever producers it was yeah, that put us off. in there. All, all the little runners ran off. But I, I was stitched up from day dot with that because they said to me, oh, you wearing eyelashes? I was like, well, yeah. And they were like, do they come off? I was like, no. I've just had them like, professionally done. They are like, oh, well, you've got to wear a mask. I was like, what do you mean I'm wearing a mask? I was like, look, am I being stitched up here? Am I on Jeremy Beadle or something? And they are like, what? 
Jeremy Beadle? And I was like, look, is it some stitch up program? I'm not really on Big Brother, am I? And then when I was standing there and I was thinking, I'm on another show. I thought I've been on a stitch up. I'm on a stitch up right now. And then I had them say, right, when your name's being called, take off your mask. So I'm writing to him my name, heard everyone else's name. My name's not even mentioned. So I'm standing there with a mask on. Everyone else is like, all right, how are you? Rah, rah, rah. I'm standing there like an absolute fool in the middle of the bloody, um, you know, outside in the garden. And it wasn't until Ryan or someone come up to me and was like, you can take your mask off. I was like, I haven't had the name. And that made you paranoid the fuck sick. after that. That, that, that so started like, you off, you know, Charlie. That, I remember that started your journey bad, that tiny moment, because yeah. you started getting paranoid thinking, why did you not tell me? Is there a reason? That's just, that's the mental state it puts your brain into. Do you remember? I reckon they did it on purpose. I'm sorry. There were seven people in our house. How can you not remember seven people's names? Sorry, you don't just forget someone. No, there were six of name. us. That's six of it. us. Yeah, you don't you don't forget the sixth person's name. Yeah, when you're sat there on live and going around, around it because I'm live TV. Um, and so I, I mean, because we're running out of time, we've only got a couple of minutes left for this episode. So I want to go to you and ask you, um, kind of live since Big Brother uh, and what you do now for work, because we've only got a couple of minutes left, unfortunately. So I want to hear, hear from you and what yeah, what's life been like for you? Yeah, well, obviously it was hard when I first come yeah. out. It was really weird, like you know, like. Huey said, you're, you're in this weird bubble where you don't really want to go out and people recognise you all of a sudden when they didn't before. I didn't even want to go into Tesco's. You know, I was scared that I was going to have cabbages frying at me and shit. So it was a bit of a weird place. <laughs> no, I swear. You I, honestly, I felt the like I, had onions at her. I come out to booze and I was really upset because I thought that I did myself proud. So when, when I've come out like, woo, hi everyone, they're all like, boo, I'm like, what? And then I'm reading all the tweets and all the comments. It was really hard yeah. because I thought, that's yeah. not me. You, who, who's this girl you're talking about? Because it's not me. Um, so I was in a weird place. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I slowly went back to normal life really after that. I mean, I did a bit of TV work. I did that tattoo thing on MTV with oh, Bobby yeah. and that was really fun stuff. Um, and I've had a bit of surgery and things like that. So I, I now work for like um, a couple of surgeries and things that are based in Turkey. And I do have a few, like a few other bits and bobs. I like to have my fingers in a few pies, you know, keeps uh, keeps the pocket money rolling. But um, I mean, I just wanted to get back to normality really, because although I did yeah. like that sort of lifestyle, I don't like how people perceive you as a person. And if you're not current, like Huey says, it's kind of like, oh, see how your old hat. And I don't think it yeah. should be done like that. No. Um, it's, it's not good for people's mental health. You know, one no. minute you're the best thing that sliced bread, and then the next minute it's like, oh, yeah, who, who's that? I and then also, that. Charlie, normal it's society not. sometimes doesn't respect you either because as soon as jobs do background checks, yeah, you're put into the stigma of being on a reality show, which isn't fair yeah. either. So it's yeah. so and important. I have, and, I, and it has stopped me from doing people to know the reality of reality TV. Yeah. Doing Big Brother has stopped me from doing certain things. The moment that's wow. like that's been said, and obviously I'm not going to lie about it because well you can't. It's it's everywhere. It's all yeah, over Google. Yeah. It it, um, it it did stop me from doing things as well. And I, and I tell Work you what, wise. I don't like some of the some of the articles that were printed about me, which were completely false. And you know all these stupid things that were written that that really upsets me because they're on Google now and people will read them and they stupidly believe them. Like you know, I know that half of those things that you read on Google, but anyone is false. They're, they're literally printed. Sorry, anymore. everyone. I don't know if you've just heard that, but I'm just farting. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Darling, did, any, did any housemates do stories on you? Because you said before, um, well, just at the start of this, you were, if other housemates were on, you would have spoke to them about some of the things that were said. After yeah, there were stories written about me and things written and tweets that I saw. Opinion, yeah, damn right yeah. it was. Wow. Fucking and false. And said behind her back in and the I, house. I prefer people to WhatsApp me because it's not hard to get my my number or email me. Say it to my, like, well, not to my yeah. face, but at least it will say it directly, not just put it out there for everyone to see so you look like a, you know, a courageous person. But Charlie, all you wanted you like was food. another moment in the press, that's why. And you used your name because, at that time because you were dramatic in the house to the press to write a story because you just like being horrible to people. So, one more you know, and I, I do want to put it out there. And I do want to put this out there. I love animals, right? I, I love anything. Anything like animals. I mean, I... I'll take ants outside. If I see an ant inside, I think, oh, come on, mate. Come on, I'll put him on my hand. I'll put him out on, on the windsill. I did not kick a dog. So I'm sorry. That really Yeah, you were accused off. of kicking. Tell because you, yeah, I would take that to my grave. I did not kick yeah. a dog. I would never kick a little 
animal ever in my life. And people that know me know how much I love animals and how much I love nature. You know, I go still hunting and stuff like that. That's the kind of person I'm a geek at heart. There was no way I kicked that dog. And that really pissed me off because, of, oh, hey, how a week later I'm kicked out. Obviously yeah. I was going to be, you know, you say something like that. It's, it's, it sticks with people and people think that I'm that sort of person, but I do want to put that across for the record. I did not kick no one's dog. I've never no, kicked no one's dog. I didn't like the dog and I didn't like it sleeping on my bed because I think it's unhygienic and there was hair everywhere. Yes, I will say that, but I never kicked that dog. So I just need to get that across there. Didn't happen. <laughs> Charlie, I still find that a funny moment of the series though. When you were in the thing explaining uh, and you went, I did not kick the dog. I'll admit it. I don't like the dog. It used to come and I'd be like, oh, Get away. <laughs> <It is. laughs> no, it's, it's so funny. It's an Charlie's dog. like, oh, Charlie just had... Real bad. Like, it's breath smelt. Char Char Charlie, sorry, head. mine cut off there for a second. Charlie just had um, a status the other day on social media saying how much she loves animals that she'd have a pet hedgehog if she could. So that just goes to show you. Yeah. Oh, I do. I love hedgehogs. I stop for hedgehogs in the road and I don't care if I've got a whole queue of people behind me. Oh. I will stop for that hedgehog and I'll talk to it. I talk to the little baby and I'm like, come on. I love that. Off you go, mate. Oh, bless. Off I look down the street. I run after pugs down the street. So it's bullshit. I bloody love animals, you know, because they're lovely. It's the humans you've got to watch. You're a lovely girl. Don't way, you don't need to explain that to anyone because you're yeah, so lovely and you got so much shit in the house. Huey, um, I want to say the last thing with you uh, before we go is, first of all, you should have won the show. And I, I know people say I'm meant to be neutral on this, but hands down you should have won that entire show you were just thank an absolute you great housemate um so first of all i want to know what you do now for a job and can you please give us the trouble riser line because it's incredible right i'll give you the trouble riser line <laughs> right so i used to live in the uk now i like my plans going forward is moving home to ireland did do a lot of tv stuff and i have been approached very recently since people know there's been a lot of changes in my personal life by producers in Ireland for television again. And I've recently uh, trained in the makeup industry and I've been training in the beauty industry the past few months. So I have um, been involved in those industries for a while. And I used to actually be on the side of doing that after Big Brother. I used to work with vulnerable children in care that many people would know about. And I used to volunteer for homeless charity. Um, but just to very quickly say, when I applied to work with children in care, five companies turned me down because I'd been on reality TV. So that's something for people out there to understand. And it's also, I feel like that's a campaign that's necessary. That, that's, that, that should be part of the Discrimination Act because what goes on the internet, it's like stuff stays there forever and sometimes people get branded in the wrong ways. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So going forward, I want to be a makeup artist and I'm starting up my own YouTube channel soon with that. And um, I want to do a campaign about internal stigma in the travelling community, about how it can be very difficult to be an individual, to come out and stuff like that when you feel suppressed and stuff. So that's something I'm very passionate about. And something to focus on because I've had a lot of heartache recently. So I really needed to focus and try and put my mind places that matter. I feel like that was the whole point of us splitting up, is to do that. Um, yeah, so that's my future plans. I'm happy. I'm sad about my recent yeah. breakup, but I'm happy and trying to get on with life. Oh, I love that. Thank you. So you're going you're gonna to call it, you're going to say the trouble riser line. Ready? This will be the engine. Now go away, you troublemaking bitch! Yes. <laughs> I love, honestly, thank you so much. It's been amazing having you on. Um, I don't know where Charlie's gone, by the way, but thanks to Charlie for, for coming on as well. Um, and both of you being so open and honest. And thank I want to say to people watching this, from the start of asking you both to be in this, you were so nice in regards to, you didn't care who was on, you had no drama, you weren't, you know, yeah, I'm not arsed, yeah. It's so nice. So thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. No worries at all. It's nice for the fans of the show and people who watch and people like yourself. So I'll always be supportive of the programme. I'll always talk about it when I'm asked because I'm so proud of and thankful for getting to do it through the ups and the downs. So thank you. And I hope when people wa watch this, be a nice update for them and stuff. And thank yeah. you to all of them for their support. Don't forget to come back on Monday for the Big Brother 18 reunion. We have lots of the uh, the stars from Big Brother 18. And again, it's one not to be missed. They definitely do not hold back, that's for sure. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Again, it was only two, but there were two who were very opinionated, had lots to say about the show. 
I mean, it was great to get them on. Again, don't forget if you did enjoy it, like, comment and subscribe. And I'll be announcing the Celebrity Big Brother reunion lineup very shortly. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Lewis J. Nichols, where I will start revealing the lineup next week.